Oopsie. You're on, you're on the stream. On, yeah, it, it's it's jarring because on stream you put your prizes on the wrong. Well, I say wrong. Yeah, the yeah. Opposite side to where people traditionally mm -hmm. put them, so it is a bit jarring. Yeah. So so here we go. We are ready to kick off with our round 13 feature match. David against Vincent. Raging Bolt against Charizard. The basics are flipped, and no, Vincent will be going first. first. And it was just a lost vacuum. Oh no. He's gonna need to bench the Radiant Charizard because otherwise David could just run away with this. Yeah, yeah, just to stay in the game, right? But even so, if David. Can get a turn one knockout on a Pidgey. It's uh, already. It, it feels like Vincent is so far behind. It does. It's not a good feeling. So, <sighs> Getting an early Pidgey is nice. Well, I uh, know. I guess what I guess what you do is yeah, you attach and retreat right. So that way at least David has to get. Uh, no, not even. Oh my gosh. I guess it's not guaranteed that David does get the turn one knockout. So maybe you just want to keep that energy in hand. Either either way, over to David. So as oh, you see, wow. I can seal cards. <laughs> I can seal cards. One lightning energy receiving two lightning energy. Yeah. <laughs> Ultra balling away the first. Sandy Shocks and Lightning Energy. This is the first kind of ode to what David is playing for Vincent. So maybe they will be regretting leaving yeah. that Pidgey in the active a little bit at this point. I don't know. Yeah. Now, we didn't quite have a chance to talk about the prizes. Actually, the prizes are a little bit awkward for both players. From Vincent's side, we do see a couple of Fire Energy. These decks tend to play low Fire Energy counts, so that doesn't feel great. And the one-off Cleffer prize, too. For Ooh. David, the Raikou V is prized, a Fighting Energy is prized, the Squawk is prized, and the Hisuian Heavy Ball. You know what? I'm going to say it. I also don't love that uh, Slitherwing is also prized. Oh, yeah, that too. As a single prize attacker, as an attempt to kind of swing the prize trade back in your favor, Slitherwing doesn't do loads of damage, but it can certainly take out a Charmeleon, a Pidgey, or a Charmander early game and leave a single prize option in the active. Whereas at the moment, David's going to be looking at those higher HP Pokemon trying to kind of bulk their way out of this situation because Charizard won't be able to do enough damage this early in the game. Yeah, so really not, not a great feeling, but David's still setting up okay, at least for, for now, working the best with what he does have. Two, another Lightning hit, hits a discard now after an Ultra Ball discarding that and a Pal Pad. And now David has the Professor Sardis Vitality. Oh, we love to see it. We love to see I, it for David. It's also Fighting Energy as well! Yo, and the two. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Goodness me, that's a really, really good draw. Although you oh, don't, I don't know, what you then, I feel like I want to take the Pidgey out. Yeah, that's I a problem. Don't want to prime catch her, but it's gonna have to yeah. happen. At least you're taking a KO. Be a super aggressive start. Discarding three energy, three times seven. You do the math. Chat knocks out the Radiant Charizard. Yeah, and no, that's it's it's an early KO. It's great. Ideally, yeah, like you would have wanted to KO the Pidgey, but you needed to get the switch in, so you kind of were forced to bring up something you didn't want to, just so you can get the Rage Bolt in the active. I feel like you're not too worried either. Like. You know that you're not going to be punished. There's no attack coming this turn from the opposite side of the board. Vincent cannot do anything. There is no way they can set up an attack. The only way it could have been possible is if Vincent had of attached an energy for turn. However, having not had a deck search previously, I do feel like they did the right thing. It is too risky to attach an energy when you don't know how many you've got left, considering the low energy count in yeah. this deck. Important to point out as well, that buddy buddy puffin, that was the draw for turn. So it I'm was. sure Vincent would have loved to see that last turn, oh. but uh, we'll be, still be able to set up nicely here with the one buddy buddy puffin then Vincent can play that Arvin grab maybe another buddy puffin or a nest ball and a, a tool you can maybe combine that with a forest steel stone get a V dip poke one down and so Vincent one turn late but will be able to set up this turn very nicely indeed it will and hopefully it will be his way to the victory hopefully this will be enough to claw him back into this game no matter what we knew he had the Arvin we knew Charmanders were getting played this turn however the extra kind of bench power of the Buddy Buddy Poffin was a beautiful top deck. I don't really know if I could have thought of anything better for Vincent in that moment. I think the only thing I'd have maybe liked to have seen was maybe maybe some hand disruption just to kind of get his own hand changed. Yeah. But long term, this wait, isn't a bad wait. hand. We can go in with the Arvin. Oh wait, uh, yeah, I forgot the forest. Start. The, the forest seal stone's already in hand, so it you is. can actually. So that means you can Ooh, use the use the okay. tool of the Arvin to get that hero's cape. That's oh. super strong. Oh, I like that. I wonder whether Vincent will save the hero's cape, like not attach it now. Yeah, I don't think you get the max benefit out of attaching it now, but it's no. good to have it in hand. Maybe forces David to do an Iono instead of another supporter, just to know. Oh, I don't want uh, Vincent to have access to this at the most uh, vital time. But yeah, they're going for that Nest Ball as well. Grabs that Rotom V, and now you can put down that Forest Seal Stone and fire off that Star Alchemy. Or you can even save it, actually. It looks like Vincent might be thinking about saving it. I think it's sensible to save it right now if you don't need it. Just because 
David could hand disrupt. There was a high chance of him hand disrupting. Mm. The only thing that kind of sets me back on hand disruption is that David then won't be able to launch an attack. Yeah. He needs to be Professor Sardering every single turn if the if there's no excess energy left on those Raging Bolts. So I would be pretty confident, to be honest, that he's not going to use a disruption supporter this turn because he needs the Professor Sarda to keep on putting that pressure on mm -hmm. Vincent, that Vincent kind of knows isn't coming. So yeah. yeah, it was just an instant charge. Yeah, it does bank that Forestio Stone on the Rotom V, though, just to have it there in case some kind of disruption does happen. But yeah, you're absolutely right. David, this is an aggressive deck. You need to be soldering, as, especially as you just said, you have no energy down. You need to solder basically every single turn. As we do see, David fires off his own Forest Seal Stone. Star Alchemy just grabs that Sardar's Vitality straight away. Doesn't even hide it from Vincent. <laughs> I'd be really worried about that Forest Seal Stone, if I'm honest. Knowing that there was a Raikou on the bench, knowing that David's own Forest Seal Stone could come up, come up come and play. I worry that a lost vacuum would take my V-Star power away. I think if I was Vincent, I would have kept that in hand personally, just so that knowing that Sada has to be played, yeah, that, that... no disruption, but lost vacuum still takes away your own V-Star. And with Vincent's hand being dubious right now, I wouldn't personally feel super comfortable with that. Yeah, yeah, because that's the thing, right? Against another deck, you might be more worried about disruption, but given that you know that this isn't a disruption heavy deck, then yeah, maybe in this instance, you adapt to your thinking and you think, oh, but actually banking it might not make sense because that leaves me more vulnerable to something else. Now, it is worth checking. I'm not sure if David is playing a lost vacuum. He actually, uh, oh, yeah, he's, playing, I, he's playing the one. Yeah, I saw it in deck when they were searching oh, up the Forest okay. Hill Stone, and I was like, oh, no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but so, there was no Sada in hand, so David had to use the Forest Hill Stone for the Sada. Yeah, bits and having to pick up the Sandy Shocks and read it. <laughs> I mean, yeah. that's valid. Yeah. I think when Sandy Shocks was first released, it was a very underestimated card. Uh, but if you're behind in prize cards, you're able to accelerate energy from your discard pile onto the Sandy Shocks and use that as an attack cost for... Yeah. Uh, raging Bolt. So not, not just behind, your opponent has to have four or less remaining. That's yeah, the yeah, one, yeah. yes, so, yeah, absolutely with right. That, with that magnetic absorption, yeah. Urban Spike, as well as the attack, it just does 200 damage, and then uh, next turn, uh, the Sandy Shocks can't attack. Maybe if you want to hit something Fighting Weak, it could be an okay option, but generally speaking, it's just in here to power up the Raging Bolt. Yeah, those Fresh Grabs went and grabbed us a Switch Cart, which I love in this matchup, and only one energy discarding to take out a Charmander. It doesn't matter what Charmander it is, doesn't matter how much HP it's got, 70 is enough. Yes, so David taking a knockout number two. That does now mean, though, that David's taking two prizes. So with that Burning Darkness, the Charge RDX is now doing 240 damage, which is exactly enough to KO a Raging Bolt EX. Oh, that is a nice number. That is pretty spicy. And I think that's why David needed this turn. He needed to be able to leave a Lightning Energy on both Raging Bolt, knowing that Vincent could come back with a really scary attack. Mm -hmm. uh, again, straight in with the Rare Candy, Charizard. Yeah. Yeah. Lovely display, really nice. Yeah. So maybe that was why the um, the Forest Seal Stone did go down, because if there was disruption, obviously the Rare Candy and Charizard wouldn't be yeah. in hand. Actually, important to note that the, the, the Raikou V, that was, of course, we mentioned, that was in the prizes. So mm -hmm. that was a very tiny pickup from um, David, able to put that down to have something to put the Forest Seal Stone on. Yeah, great utilization of uh, kind of knowing what's in your prize cards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I mean, yeah, you don't necessarily know that you uh, will take it, but you, maybe you take the chance, right? Or just then you kind of bank around that that way. As now the hero's cape does go on, yeah, absolutely makes sense to put it down now. David's going to have a very hard time now carrying this Charizard DX unless he can unless he can find that lost vacuum, of course. Now the interesting thing to note, I think, as well, is that the Sandy Shocks will now be able to accelerate energy. Oh, that's true. Once the Charizard is KO'd, Vincent will go down to four prize cards. I think that Sandy Shocks was benched on just the right turn. I think David knew this was coming, preempted it very well. Mm -hmm. Here comes a Pidgeot as well. So Vincent's going to be able to keep the pace of play very on his side. He's going to be able to manipulate exactly what he needs to be putting in hand. He could even make a second Charizard here with a rare candy already in hand and just entirely set up and make it really difficult for David to make headway. Yeah, it's very important, especially something that I've noticed is a common theme in a lot of the decks that do well in this current format is knowing when it's OK to actually give up prizes. You know, normally yeah. you always want to race ahead. You want to deny your opponent prizes wherever possible. But these decks that play around with you know, mechanics based on what your opponent has taken prize-wise, the Sandy Shocks are only enabling when there's four prizes or left, left for your opponent. And then the same with the Charizard, doing more damage with the Burning Darkness, depending on how many prizes your opponent's taken. It can be like a little bit of a game of chicken sometimes, but knowing when is right time to strike and when it isn't is the key to doing well in a format like this with decks like this. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And I think that was really well 
well timed from that Sandy Shocks, kind of knowing that you're you're really comfortable with your opponent taking a prize card. Oh, I love this. Yes, Professor Turo oh. bringing up the Rotom, not giving David an easier KO on a kind of more vulnerable Pokemon. But I do like this also because you're limiting the Raikou's uh, damage output as well. Oh, that's true. So Vincent's Pidgeot is safer when there's one fewer Pokemon on the bench. Because I'm just going to math it. One, two. As a, what, 120 would be only 240 damage currently on the Pidgeot, I believe. So not KOing a Pidgeot currently with Raikou. Uh, yes, we'd need to get two more on the bench to do that. But I, I think also, to be fair, I'm not sure if there's a way for uh, that Raikou to get two energy on it this turn. No. I think it's mainly just putting the actives just so you have that, the use of that fleet footed, of course. You do get to draw uh, draw one card if it is in the active. Here comes a poker gear from David. Oh, there is a way. Oh, there is a way? There is a way. This deck does run two energy switch. Okay, then. So Professor Sada. Mean. Professor Sada, energy switch, and an attach for turn would do it. This Raikou is an attacking option. I thought they might be running energy switch. It's becoming a little bit more popularized in these sorts of decks where you do need to Sada to certain Pokemon but can't do it yeah. to all of them. And I mean, it makes sense as well because it means you can actually get a Raging Bolt going without a Sada. Say if you have the Sandy Shocks, attach a fighting energy and then move it over, that's a way to get it into play too. Yeah, I like that specifically for the energy cost because it is the perfect energy type. Yes. So switch card, Radiant Greninja coming in, interestingly enough. Okay, and then is it just going to be an Ino after that? We did see David get it off the Poke Gear. It might be, and that might be why Greninja is coming into the active. If David knows that he can't make a meaningful attack right now, it is disrupt and pray. Yeah. And, oh, and put down a collapse oh. stadium as well. Okay, limiting Vincent's option to bench more Pokemon. Now David will also be limited to benching himself, but he doesn't really need anything else. No. We did see he took that sliver wing off of the prizes as well. Not really going to factor in right now so in this matchup, but certainly at least not in this stage of the game. As we do see in Ino, finds an earthen vessel and it looks like a Poke Gear. That yeah, we can go with that Sandy Sharks. That's quite nice at the moment. Like, it's about it's all about me making meaningful attacks. Don't get me wrong. David very well off that Iono could have made an attack right now but is it possible <laughs> that david just tried to play a nest ball after he played his own collapse stadium and david Vince is like nope can't do that <laughs> oh that's happened to me so many times where i've been like no no yeah, yeah. The, the the stadium is too short yes. they'll fall off the end yes uh, yeah, it no, has yeah, sorry, collapsed you, but you, sorry you were saying something earlier i interrupted oh no that's okay uh mm -hmm. honestly i was just kind of mentioning how uh, it's all about meaningful attacks mm -hmm. we want to be able to make sure that Every attack we're making with a two prize Pokemon that's in the active is actually doing something. We need to be progressing the game. David's deck is revolving around taking those big knockouts. And if you can't do one, don't. It's not worth the liability of having a two prize Pokemon in the active. It's better to have Greninja take a leap of faith into the active instead. Yeah. I think my one worry here, though, is that Vincent last turn had a very, very strong turn, was able to, without even using a setup supporter, had the Rare Candy Pidgeot and the Rare Candy Charizard. So that means that Quick Search is available to Vincent. That's, that is very true. That means that Boss's Orders is always an option. In fact, oh, okay, this kind of preempts what I was going to say. If you can get the Boss's Orders without using your Quick Search, then you can use Quick Search to set up a backup attacker, and then you're in a really good checkmating position. But you... If you didn't have the Luminion, that wouldn't have been possible because you would have needed to find the boss's orders off the quick search to keep up this, you know, two prizes a turn kind of kind of deal. I think Vincent's in a tricky spot here. I really do because if you do quick search for a boss's orders, you do leave yourself vulnerable. You've got limited attackers on board. You don't have another Charizard set up. Lost Vacuum is still a card that can be played. And I feel like you're right, Freya. We want more Pokemon on the bench ready to become valid attackers. However, I think benching the Luminion is scary. I think that the Raikou and a Raging Bolt being able to take that down is terrifying. And we've already used a Professor Turo. Mm. So, yes, what I'm thinking here is with the Luminion, so in this instance, Vincent has opted to go for the boss's orders of the quick search, so that's a decision that's been taken. If you try, so have the means to set up a Charizard and then grab the boss's orders with the Luminion, 
even if you get knocked out back, you have two Charizards ready to go, you're fine. I guess what the issue is, there weren't enough pieces in hand to put together the next Charizard, even with the Luminion and the, and the Quick Search available. So in this instance, yeah, knowing that you can't do that, then don't put the extra risk down and don't put down the Luminion and just go for Quick Search for the boss's orders instead. Yeah, I agree. And I also, I, I really think that Luminion's such a liability because this Raikou can come forward, it can attack, and you don't have to spend the energy. So if Raikou then survives and carries on, then Raikou is in a really strong position. David goes down to two prize cards. I just feel like Luminion is too scary at this stage of the game. Yeah. Vincent wants to go down to two prize cards with as few liabilities on yeah. bench as possible. It would have only been okay if Vincent was able to set up two Charizard DXs this, this turn. Given that he hasn't been able to do that, this absolutely is the best move to make, especially given that you know the hero's cape is in the active on the Charizard DX. So David can get the KO, but he's going to need to discard a lot of energy to do it. And I'm not sure we're there yet. How many are we at? We're at... We're at 240. Four. Sorry, 280 rather. So we're at 280. Now we've just topped over. 350. That's 350. So we're not there yet. We've got to keep going or we've got to find a vacuum. Math along with us at yeah. home, friends. We're learning. Pretty that this is going to be 420. This, this is 10 short. So now Here you just we need go. one more. Come on, baby. Let's see that energy. Do have energy or the lost vacuum? Yeah, no, that's not quite enough. I don't think we've got enough. I don't think you can do it. Oh, I think it's one shot. I mean, is he attached for turn yet? We've I got the other vessel. No, no, I don't think so. There's been a Sandy Shocks and there's been a Sada. So, well, two Sandy Shocks and a Sada. So, yeah. Oh, my gosh. We could do it. We could go straight through that hero's cape. Wait, this Charizard may not be heroic enough, but there, I think there's there no energy in deck. deck. <gasps> no. Oh, my goodness. There's one in the prize cards. Right. Oh, I didn't Shoot. even draw attention to that because, of course, uh, most of the time, think, oh, one energy prize, not a big deal. But here, you need that last energy to take the KO. That's it's brutal. It's because of the cape. The cape did yeah. it all. It's come in clutch. Ten Maybe the Charizard. short. Right? <laughs> Ten short. Held on by the edge of the cape. <laughs> This, does, this Bologna stream does feel like the most mass tested we've ever been. In fact, oh, David just concedes the game because honestly, of that. I think that's the right thing to do. Like I was saying earlier, making a meaningful knockout is what we're all about when we're looking at Raging Bolt. And if we can't knock out, then it's a waste. Yeah, I mean, 420 damage, what? Then Vincent can maybe even just get back Professor Turo, pick up the Charizard, and then just undo all that hard work. And then. Don't even need to do that. He had two prize cards left. He just knocks out. I mean, that works too. Yeah, that, that's, like, yeah, that's, that's it. That's game. There was, uh, unless, unless they were able to make a meaningful attack and knock out that Charizard, then, so there yeah. was no valid attacker on board. Vincent only had two prize cards left, so taking so, out that Charizard was essential. Yeah, it, I, I guess the only thing that maybe could have been done was retreating into something of an ancient booster energy capsule. That way, the Charizard you wouldn't have been able to take the KO because 240 wouldn't have been enough. But they're able to put it on the raging bolt, and knowing that also there's access to bosses' orders with the quick search, so it, it, it kind of just doesn't matter. No, exactly. And I think that's you know the very well analyzed by David, and mm. it's sort of okay. We we're on a time limit here. Let's boogie on to the next game because otherwise I'm not going to be able to have a chance to make those meaningful attacks next time. Yeah. So. Very very, very rough there on, on David's side. Just that little bit short of the KO. But again, that hero's cape, it does seem like more and more, this might be just the best choice of A-spec for Charizard. Ooh. I, but possibly. Ooh, bold. But, bold. I mean, I mean so we, have, we have seen some of the most successful Charizards that's piloting it. And of course, the Charizard control variants as well. We mm -hmm. play Pidgeot on Charizard. They come in there as well. That 100 HP just makes it, you already have 330. You buff yourself up to 430. And suddenly, even a Raging Bolt with seven or six energy can't get the KO on you i don't know i just i i fear the vacuum i feel i fear it i feel it. Like someone turning that vacuum cleaner on you know <laughs> accidentally quite catches the edge of my cape and go, whoop, oh, off it goes nice. it's, it's too terrifying i it just is. feel like removal of someone's a spec is so strong and i i personally prefer the a specs where i get to play them and then then it's then it's done you don't get to disrupt that you can't stop that you can't say no you can't say no that is true unless unless you're playing as uh, in the last round uh, Bennett, of course, the, oh, okay, the yeah. shutting off I'll items. But, gen that. but generally speaking, yes, <laughs> absolutely right. So Vincent going first again. No surprise here. David uh, wants to go second and get that early aggressive attack. Vincent already with a much better start here, though, does start off with that Buddy Buddy Poffin. I like the Buddy Poffins. Like I mentioned it yesterday. I'm going to mention it again. Love this card. Love it so much, especially for Charizard. It's fantastic. Starting the Manaphy, eh, bit irrelevant. Not bad to have in the active, though, as sort of a protector. It was it protects the bench from bench damage, but in this instance, it's protecting the bench from being attacked when there are going to be much more valid Pokemon there right yeah. now. And, and if uh, David takes a turn one KO on a Manaphy, sure, it's a prize, but it's also a Pokemon that
that Vincent doesn't mind losing, and it's also one extra you know, prize card of fuel for burning the darkness to do more damage. Absolutely. Uh, David's starting with just a lone Squawker Billy. I like Squawker Billy in this deck. We didn't have access to it last time, but now we're going to see some uh, Squawk shenanigans. Yes, Squawk shenanigans indeed. So, Buddy Buddy Poffin coming in with, yeah, just uh, oh, double Charmander, double interestingly Manda. enough. Yeah, there is there is uh, no Pidgey in the prizes, but there is one Pidgeot in there. But I imagine there's got to be another Buddy Poffin in hand if you're going to go for that. You do need to get down a Pidgey on that first turn. I, I'm going to disagree a little bit. Uh, OK. I'm, I'm going to disagree a little bit. I would personally be worried, especially with a Squawker Billy in the active, that David is going to be able to take a turn one knockout. Being able to possibly prime capture a lone Charmander would put Vincent behind quite considerably, and I would be very worried about that personally. We could use the Ultra Ball to get a Pidgey, but I think double Charmander is the right call here personally. Uh, yeah, right, yeah, okay, that's, that's definitely a possibility. So so I guess I was just assuming that there'd be another Buddy Buddy Poffin, but if you don't have access to that, then yeah, banking the double Charmander to make sure you have an attacker next turn does make a lot of sense. So yeah, here we go. David, with the Squawk Billy start, not prized like it was last game, going to be able to start very aggressively here. Has the Ultra Ball already to grab a good grab a Raging Bolt, grab a Radiant Grenade. Ninja could really grab that Raikou, plenty of choices there, but is going to grab that Raging Bolt yet straight away. It's a shame to get rid of a Super Rod, but I think when you're put into a corner like this, David has to monopolize on the Squawk Billy. The Squawk Billy is not useful after this turn. Motivate is an okay attack, don't get me wrong, especially in this matchup, to be totally honest with you. It may even be a motivational turn this turn. It is an appropriate turn to use Motivate. However, that is very much a backup plan. David wants to be attacking this turn. He wants to be going aggressive, especially with the double Charmander. I think it is almost a bluff from Vincent. Going double Charmander says to your opponent, I can make a Charizard. Yep. Yes, I can. I can absolutely make a Charizard. Oh, and here we go. Yeah, I can make it. Yeah. Squawk and Seas for the first time here in the Bologna stream. Love this ability so much. Squawk really, like, Loki, one of my favorite cards uh, from the Scarlet and Violet era. Does find six Ooh, cards on turn one. That uh, looks like a lovely hand. That is, yeah. I mean, I think the only thing is missing really is energy. There's a side effect. Oh, no, there's the Earthen Vessel. Never yeah, mind. I think we're good. We got an Earthen Vessel, get two energy, use Ultra Ball to get rid of those energy. Professor mm -hmm. Sada, two energy on two Pokemon. I think what you're missing is the attached for turn, but you might well get it off the Professor Sada. Yes, so going to fire off the Pokestop first. And Ooh, oh, we love there that. We, oh, oh, that's really good. Baby, we love to see that. Two energy in the discard pile. We got three total in the discard pile. Sada is live. We got two ancient Pokemon on the bench. Life couldn't be better. Yeah, that, that was about as good a Pokestop as David could have asked for there. So Professor Sada's Vitality going to attach a Lightning and a Fighter. So one of those Raging Bolts is ready to go. Oh, Draw three go. cards, and now you have... Oh, you have the Switch card as well, so you card. don't even need to attach for turn wow. to retreat. Wow. And going for a Nest Ball, solidify that board stay. I'm not sure what I'd go for here. It's Raging Greninja, right? Yeah. I think it's really the only... The next best thing right now yeah. is the Greninja. Yep. Totally right, Freya. Called yeah. it. Yeah, so it, it would have to be either that or maybe the Raikou B if you want to uh, bank a Forest Seal Stone. But yeah. Raging Greninja, it, it draws you cards throughout the whole game, so it makes absolute sense to go for that. Hasn't even played that Urban Vessel yet. No, but I mean, at least we can utilize the Radiant Greninja, right? I like the keeping the Luminion just in case uh, David's going to need that for getting a uh, another Professor yeah. Sada next turn. Yeah. Just keeping that pace of play steady, taking the big knockouts from Vincent. It's a shame we can't take a two prize <laughs> at this turn, but I still think it's worth going for the Manaphy. I would love to see a Charmander be taken out here, to be honest it's with you. Actually... Maybe is it worth just like not knocking out the Manaphy at all? It doesn't really get you any further. All it does is give extra fuel for Vincent, and it doesn't really help your prize map that much. Maybe you actually just leave it in the... Oh, hold on, another prime catcher. catcher. Okay. Huzzah! <laughs> so... <laughs> oh, not going to go for it. Going to switch cards. Okay. Okay. I'm just going to pass. Yeah, no, I like this a lot. Okay, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's awkward for Vincent, right? Yeah, because now you're doing... You're limited to 180 damage uh, with the Burning Darkness, so you don't really have an easy way to reach for a knockout, especially because I do believe, and I'm going to correct myself here if I'm wrong, uh, Vincent is playing a Defiance Band. I love this. Um, okay, no, no, he's uh, not. So, Oh, no, yes, yeah, yeah, one. So uh, if David took a knockout with the extra damage from the Burning Darkness plus Defiance Band, Charizard could actually take a return knockout on a Raging Ball. So actually very heads up from David not taking the knockout here. That's some huge mathematics. Mm -hmm. I love that. Recognizing that Charizard has limited energy, one's going to probably need to be attached to the Mana Fee to retreat, plus needing to get the Charizard, which feels like it was a bit of a bluff here. A yeah, little bit, yeah. Because we're going to need to iron O after this um, possible Charmeleon play? 
Yeah, you can do Charmeleon just to get a card out of the deck and make sure you can actually do Charizard for next turn, yeah. And then you still, if you do manage to hit the combo of Red Candy Charizard, you still have another one to evolve up, so. Exactly. So again, like solidifying the, the late game, but I think it, this doesn't feel great. There no. is a chance that a Charizard could be missed right now. Yeah. The only other thing you might want to grab is a Pidgey here, just so you do have an option for the Pidgeot next turn. And that would, I imagine that would be the only debate that, debate that Vincent was having. But just bank the, Char bank the Charmeleon at this point and then go for the Iono. Maybe you hit a Pidgey off of that. Maybe you hit Red Candy Charizard. You're drawing six cards, so odds are good to hit something useful at least. I really like the Charmeleon here, mm. especially because you're using Iono. You know that there's nothing at the bottom of the deck necessarily. You haven't put anything there that could kind of be something that you need, like a Charizard. Mm. Uh, I think it's pretty strong to play it now. I feel like we're going to see a Charizard. I don't know if we're going to yeah. see the Red Candy as well. I mean, the Ino was kind of... Oh, I mean, the Ino was kind of big too because David's hand was pretty good. Uh, but from Vincent's side, oh, draw two more Charmander, it looks like. Oh, and a Charizard, but no Red Candy. Yeah. So I was on the money. But just a little bit short, it looks like. Yeah, there's a Red Candy, but no Charizard. Oh, no, no, we do have both. Oh, yeah, we, we do, do have, have both. Okay. It's just the gold one. Yeah. Oh, lovely. So we don't miss the Charizard. No. But, Absolutely fantastic. So we but, can respond, but doesn't take a KO. Yeah. But now the debate is, is it worth going for, considering you can't like take a meaningful knockout? Yeah, no, just hide it. You don't You don't need to. No. 180 damage doesn't get you anywhere. Just go, are we going full Charmander? Four Charmanders on the bench? This is the biggest game of Pokemon Chicken I've ever it's freaking a, seen. <laughs> like, honestly, everyone's like, I'm not going to take a knockout until you take a knockout. No, I'm not going to take a knockout <laughs> until you take a knockout. I mean, it goes back to exactly what we were talking about in game one, right? These are the kind of decks that do kind of operate in that way so you kind of have to do be a little bit careful in uh, and in considering that and but the problem is you have to weigh it up right you have to find the right time to be the one to strike first and to know that your opponent isn't going to be able to capitalize on that to make a comeback yeah you're quite right i wonder whether david takes the bait and goes for the charmeleon this turn uh, populating your board with loads of energy, great. Getting more attack, attackers down, also great. Getting as much energy into into play. But unless you start attacking, like unless, unless someone breaks this chain, and there's enough Charmander out now, the Vincent's almost definitely going to be able to make a Charizard next turn. Although they can't take a meaningful knockout on anything other than Squawkabilly, I still wouldn't really want to risk that. Yeah, it, it's... Trying to, I'm, I'm trying to think in the, into like the smaller details here. So, yeah, one of these players needs to take a knockout at some point. No knockout here feels good. So, I mean, David can try and set up the board. Yeah, Jewel actually might be the best option for David right now. If he can find that sliver wing and take a single prize knockout with that, that would probably be his best option at this point because then Ooh. you're not worried about that knockback and you, you're, you force Vincent to find the boss's orders to take a meaningful two prize knockout, which is going to be a lot harder to do given that there's no Pidgey on the field. I like that. We did just earth and vessel away in the nest ball taken off the tracking shoes though oh. and now we've ultra balled away a Raikou and a Raging Bolt to take Lumineon so I'm a little bit dubious of that's th if that's the plan here I love that plan I'm on board with that plan but I think David might be a little bit worried about Squawkabilly here yeah I, I think so too I mean it, it is such a liability 160 HP it, it, that would be the one option that if uh, Vincent can find the boss's orders uh, can bring it up and get take care even with the 180 damage well, what was that was the Pokestop that was a double Pokegear okay pop up a pink Pokey Gears <laughs> and a Sandy Shocks in the discard pile. And remember, we had to get rid of that uh, Super Rod really early on. I'm a little bit worried about Ooh. managing of resources here. That is the only Super Rod in the deck. Yeah. Is there any way for David to get that Squawk really off? Because we were, just, we were just talking about how, you know, getting a two prize KO is a little bit tough here. But if Vincent can KO it, oh, 180 damage is enough to knock it out. David does not need to take any prizes no. for Charizard EX to do that. So I think that might be what Vincent is going for. A little bit harder to get there without the boss's orders, but there is the Luminion ready in hand to maybe get that next turn and we know that the Charizard is in hand too. Exactly. Now um, David does run Collapse Stadium. So I think maybe David was just going, I'm gonna draw as many cards as I can. I want to get towards that collapse stadium. If I can shove this squawkability off the edge of the bench, <laughs> then maybe uh, maybe it can happen. Fly away, Squawkabilly, you're no longer needed. <laughs> you, 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 did your, you did your job, but uh, no more than that. There's uh, there's an ancient booster energy capsule. Ooh, that's like pretty that. good as well. Another energy attachment going on. Palpad to get some supporters back in. That's very very good too. Of course, you want to be, like we already discussed, you want to be soldering as much as possible here. Only one to get back in this instance. But uh, I don't think David is going to be able to reach for that collapse stadium, you know. I don't either. And I, and I. It is only the one that sure. he plays. I'm not sure what the play here is. It, right it, now. It's, it's such a game of chicken, right? <laughs> that's, that's that's the problem. Go uh, for burst roar. Go for burst roar. Yeah. Uh, uh, 
to score oh, yeah. hand and draw six. <laughs> that is burst roar. Yeah, that, that is an attack that, Rory, that Raging Bolt has. So yeah, just scardy hand draw six for one energy. It's a re the really game. solid support, like backup attack that you can use if you don't want to take a knockout. The game of chicken it's continues. But, but here's the problem. The game of chicken continues, but I think Vincent is going to be, going to be the one to strike first here. The oh, Charizard yeah. is in hand, the Luminion's in hand. You can take the two prize knockout on the Squawker Billy, and then you are initiating that race in a way that's a lot more favorable to you. Yeah, and I mean, David doesn't have a Sandy Shocks down right now. I believe there are two in the discard, but there's one in hand. And if Vincent takes the first two prize cards, then Sandy Shocks goes online. And so I kind of like this. There's a bunch of energy on David's board. David's got, you know what? My hand was terrible. What shall I do about it? I'm just going to get a new one. I'm going to have another one. Yeah. Thinking that probably Squawker Billy is a bit of bait here, knowing that it's the only Pokemon that Vincent can reliably knock out, mm. I think the Squawker Billy is being used as a little bit of bait here Maybe so that so. David can keep all of that energy on board ready for a huge comeback KO. Yeah. And that's why Vincent needs that K. Yeah, the Heroes K, but it definitely important in that regard. It, it is... It is a little bit tricky, though, in the, in the sense that, I mean, sure, if you if you use that Squawk ability, or if you bring up that Squawk ability and KO it, then, yeah, that does enable David to burst as well. But if you can just go two for two for two, you're essentially just racing at that point, and in that race, you'll always win. So Vincent might not necessarily mind that, but maybe being mindful of that, just still thinking, I don't want to pull the trigger just yet, and uh, he's now finally going to find that Pidgey off of that Buddy Puffin search from the Arvin as well. And here we go. This is the moment. This is it. But are we going to begin the combo? We didn't go for the Luminion. Went for a Pidgey instead. Yeah, but well, you played the Arvin, so you can't go for the Bosses orders anymore. No. And, and Counter Catcher's not live either because no. neither player's taken a prize yet. And uh, Vincent and we, doesn't play Prime Catcher. No, we know that that's not possible. So maybe, maybe this isn't the turn. I, I think so. I think Vincent is still kind of wanting to hold steady here. And to be fair, Vincent, it does, it, he doesn't mind taking his time here. He is one game ahead. So, yeah, he's just going to pass. Wow. Freya, when's an attack going to happen? I, it's, it, it's kind of a it, tension moment where you're, like, you're on the edge of your seat just waiting for something to happen. But you're just thinking, oh, you, you know, something bleeds. It feels like something is just like waiting to burst out. But it, the, neither player just wants to pull the trigger just yet. They really don't. Prime catcher op available as an option for David. But again, Vincent hasn't put down a single two prize. David doesn't want to take a knockout here. He knows that as soon as he does, a Defiance Band where Charizard can come in and uh, wreak havoc on him. And it, if you're initiating a race for prizes, you take one and your opponent takes two every single time, you're going to lose. i tell you what might be a pretty... Pretty, pretty, pretty spectacular play from David yep, here. Oh, go on. I'm not sure how much energy is in the discard pile. It might just be that one. This is an opportunity for me to have a little look. Uh, so there was uh, two there that were just two. accelerated from the Sada. So what I was thinking is that you could just go straight into the belly of the beast and put Squawker Billy in the active and use Motivate to attach two energy from your discard pile to your Pokemon on the bench. I, I mean, I, d I don't hate it. <laughs> if, if, that's the be if that's the best option right now, just to uh, get your board set up. Oh, but they find the, David finds the Collapse Stadium. Oh, so we could be more aggressive here. I quite like the Squawker Billy idea. I like being like, go on then, <laughs> knock out my bird, do it. But, okay, but but see, now it, now the equation changes a little bit because if you take that Squawker Billy off the board and you take the first knockout, then if you, especially if you have a Rage Bolt in the active with an Ancient Booster Energy Capsule, Ooh. Vincent then, even with the Defiance Band, can't reach for the knockout. And then at that point, that's okay. Oh, so do we start being aggressive? Take this Clef out, only have to discard one energy. You just discard it off a of Sandy Shocks, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and, I mean, someone has to take KO at some point, right? We are in game two. We, we have, uh, only have 17 minutes left on the clock, and no one has done a, a damaging attack yet. Come on, David. <laughs> Oh, and there yes! it is, yeah, the, yeah, the collapse stadium. Huge, huge find there off of the, off of the, uh, was it off the side of, yeah, the, the, off the side of that. Push him off the bench. Yes. And so now the bird is gone. Bird is no longer the word. He's <laughs> off the bench. Thank you. That was much better. That was what I not, we're not worried about it anymore. <laughs> Ancient booster, energy capsule on the other raging bolt. Love this. Great, great call from you, Freya. Yeah. That's now. David has to find a boss's orders and bring up a Sandy Shocks for KO, which I'm not even sure if he can do. I mean, Sandy Shocks uh, it's, it has, I believe, 220 HP. I, can, again, I feel like we need one. some sad music. Yeah. I'm so sorry, Cleffa. You yeah. were the first, first casualty, my little guy. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> So proud of you. So proud of you. You did your job. You, you did it massively. But yeah, 220 HP on the Sandy Shock. So if you can find the Charizard and a Defiance Band and a Boss's Orders, then you can carry the Sandy Shocks and then you're good to go. There's a rare candy. That was a hot top deck. That, that, that was. And also, very importantly, actually, forget forget Boss's Orders. The Countercatcher is now live. Yeah. 
So you can play a supporter and then still counter catch to forget the Sandy Shocks. And then if you can initiate, again, this favorable prize race, this is exactly what you want to be doing. So Defiance Band a Charizard, bring up a Sandy Shocks, KO it, and then you go 2-2-2 two, two, two and win. I love comeback mechanics. <laughs> yes. They work so good. <laughs> it's so exciting. It keeps the game feeling balanced. So the more of those cards we've got in format, the more exciting it becomes. Yeah, because uh, uh, can you imagine like you know, a, a game of no you go, no you go like this so some time ago? You would have never really seen that as much. All the Most of the decks that do so well are so hyper aggressive. They want to take KOs as fast as possible. But in this particular instance, neither player wants to do that because they know if they do, it's going to enable you know, their opponents to make that comeback. So you have to play it so carefully. Ooh, and there's the Giants Band. That is the second piece of the puzzle. The Luminion went down for the Arvin. Yes. Love holding the Luminion till now. Mm -hmm. Love that so much. We're ready for a rare candy moment here into the Charizard on the active Charmander with the Defiance Band. It's all adding up here. And it's so great doing it this way as well because now you bank that, that Charmeleon that you mentioned uh, you know, so much uh, earlier on. Great call there. You have that ready in reserve. You attack with this Char Charizard in the active and then you know, if it does get knocked out, which given the amount of energy on the field seems likely, then you don't need another rare candy. All you need is to find the Charizard again and you're good to go with another attack. I love it. Honestly, that Charmeleon feels like such a great great fallback plan. It's like, mm, well, you know that I can do it. <laughs> I don't need anything else. I got my, I've got my guy here. And the flare veil ability as well. I know it's not super relevant in this matchup, but I love how that can kind of come into effect and protect that that kind of backup plan. Yeah. And and going for the cape as well, I love that. I could even go on the Charmeleon right now. Yeah, so uh, cape and of course that Ultra Ball, that does mean that with the other rare candy in hand, you can Ultra Ball a couple of cards away, grab that Pidgeot EX, and then you have access to that Quick Search. Vincent is setting himself up perfectly for the rest of this game. Oh, I love to see it. Poetry in motion, both players with a really strong board state. That first KO kind of taken by David in the end. Vincent's responding just perfectly and waiting for David to take that KO. So correct. Yeah. It's a brilliant plan, and that patience is what really shows these players apart. So Ultra Ball now discards the, the Bidoof and the Charmander. Don't really need either of those at this point. Obviously, the Bidoof would be nice, but you can't put it down because of the Collapse Stadium. So Ultra Ball for that, for that Pidgeot. Rare Candy, Pidgeot, oh. Quick Search. Oh you, my goodness. you find that Counter Catcher, take the KO on the Sandy Shocks, and you are... We're gaming. You, 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 we're gaming. We're gaming. <laughs> oh my gosh. Just getting the Pidgeot on top of that, as if the Charmeleon wasn't enough. Now it's, I can search for it. I don't you think I can't? Because I can just go and get a Charizard. So as long as you've got enough energy, as long as Vincent is managing that resource, everything is fine. We are set up enough. I think the only problem Vincent has here is the damage output. Yes. That is it. It is making sure that this Defiance Band Charizard is taking the correct KO. Yeah, and it's, it's got to be on the Sandy Shocks with the be. energy. Yeah, because be. you're, you're taking one energy off the board, you're taking the first two prizes, which will get you there nicely for your prize map. Uh, you're denying one extra magnetic absorption from David as well to be able to accelerate more energy. The, this is the perfect target. Into the lead goes Vincent, taking an Ultra Ball and Pidgeot off the prize cards. Not yes. bad, not bad. No, feeling good about that. Has that Forest Steel Stone banked onto the Minion V as well in case some kind of disruption happens. We were talking earlier about how, you know, the Raging Bolt EX deck can only really afford to disrupt when it already has a lot of energy on the field. This is now the case for David. It is, and disruption could happen, and we could see, uh, we could then see a vacuum as well might put a thorn in Vincent's side but at the same time I, I'm not sure Vincent has set themselves up so well the, I think you would have to take a KO on the Pidgeot at the same time to make the disruption worthwhile Yes. However, then we have this Charizard with a Defiance Band. You've taken more prize cards. Charizard could do more damage. I feel like that could be a recipe for disaster. Vincent has forced David into a choice where either choice sucks. That, that's, that, that's, yeah. And that's exactly what you want to do. If you're forcing your opponent into picking between two KOs, neither of which feels great, that is exactly how you want to you know, establish your lead. Back him into a corner, guys. Yeah. Do it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but, it, but but no, no no disruption in any case. Just going to be that Sada. You know, just deal with the threat in the active. You get there going in with the bellowing. I, can, I literally forgot the name of the attack. Help me out here, Amy. What's the name of the attack again on the Raging Bolt? Burst roll. Bursting roll. Yeah, is there it he burst is. Roll? No, no, no burst roll is the, the first attack. Yeah. Um, yeah bellowing thunder. Bellowing thunder. There bellowing he is. thunder. <laughs> I had it in my head, it was on the tip of my tongue, you put me on the spot and I got scared. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it, was the same, it was the same here, but uh, yeah. No, it's okay. Yeah, so we go ahead with the Bellowing Thunder, taking that out. Um, still a really good amount of energy on the board though, left one on each Raging Bolt. Brilliant, doesn't matter which one Vincent targets. 
both can launch a high scale attack next turn. Yeah. Vincent isn't worried, of course, because another Charizard is very near in the future. Yeah. The only thing that Vincent does, I think, need at this point is a Super Rod because there has been a lot of energy discarded already. Two just hit the discard pile yeah. from this knockout. There was a one that had to be discarded for a retreat earlier. So yeah. Vincent we can, can quick search it. Yeah, we, we can quick, quick search it. We got the Ultra Ball in hand off the prize cards for the Charizard. Quick search for the Super Rod. I think I think we're good here. We're yeah. gravy. Yeah, you got to make sure you do this in the right order. So going to Ultra Ball now and just have a look because it might be that there's enough energy in the deck and that's fine. So yeah, Vincent's going to have that look now and see there is uh, one energy in the deck right now. Yeah, only one. So definitely going to need to get that Super Rod to get some more energy back. Yeah, it's going to be important to get it now. Do you take all three energy? Do we need anything else? I, I, I feel like I, it's I, safe I, just to take three and kind of give yourself a little bit extra in case um, in case we need it late game for any retreat cost stall tactics. Yeah, or, or Radiant Charizard. Yeah, I don't think there's any other that relevant things to get back other than the energy at this point. So I think just super running in the energy back is totally fine. As we do see, not only for the quick search, actually going to do that, that star alchemy first with the forest seal stone. Maybe because you want a super rod, but you also want to get a supporter to you know just draw more cards. So it makes total sense to go for this. You could also maybe find a way to actually. Oh no, hold on, there's something to think about here. You need to do 300 damage to this raging bolt to KO it. Vincent is not doing enough damage currently, so David's taking three prizes. That means that the Charizard is only doing 270. That's not going to do it. No, it's why the Defiance Band staying in play was quite crucial, right? And I think that's why it was the best choice for David rather than trying to go for the Pidgeot. Pidgeot always seems tempting at that stage, I feel. But I like taking out the Charizard with the Defiance Band, knowing that it's very unlikely Vincent's going to be running two. We know that the A spec from the previous game is the Hero's Cave. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that was the smartest decision, going straight in with the oven. Here's oh, the cape. He Here's the vacuum. We can Here get we go. rid of that few, uh, ancient booster energy capsule. I like this. Yes. I like this a lot, Freya. I like the way this is going. Yeah, this, this is absolutely crucial. So you have the Charizard now, and you do have... Well, you, now you go for the Quick Search. You've done the Forest Seal Stone already, so you've got the one card from there, but then you can Quick Search for the Super Rod. But do you vacuum first? I mean, I, I don't think it matters too much. I mean, as long as you do both of these. Yeah, going to go for the Quick Search. No, yes, though, no, maybe. <laughs> you think it's a tease here, Vincent? Come on. <laughs> I, think, I think my concern is what is the vacuum target here? I think, honestly, I might be Quick Searching for something just a thing in the deck. Something you don't need. Something is not really useful right now. There's the yeah, Infernal Rain, attach for turn, free retreat. And honestly, I think I would be quick searching. I don't want to get rid of that wreck handy No, with no, that, that's true. I think I'm quick searching for a target for my lost vacuum at this stage. That's so wild to think about. But yeah, you, especially because there was one energy in the hand and one in the deck, that is enough to power up the Infernal Rain. So thinking, even if I'm only attaching one from the Infernal Rain, that's totally fine. I can still get the KO, especially now that I have this lost vacuum. So yeah, instead just gonna... Ooh. Oh wait, he's taking the Ooh, Super no. Rod? I think we're contemplating the Super Rod. <sighs> I'm... But, uh, but if you've gone for this line, then you I, don't really need to, right? It, it kind of feels like you're almost like a, you know, worst of both worlds situation. Oh, okay. Oh my goodness, so that's what, I, that might, I can't quite remember, correct me if I'm wrong chat, is that our last wreck handy, or I, uh... our second to last rare handy? Because we've definitely used one on Pidgeot, we've used one on one Charizard, but Charmeleon was the other, yeah. so I believe that's rare handy number three. Yeah, so there's one left. There is one left. Okay, so that's, so that's okay, and... It's well, a resource that's worth counting yeah. for David. And Actually, there is something else as well that's important to draw attention to. This Charizard EX has a Hero's Cape on it. We saw how hard it was to get a KO on a Hero's Cape Charizard before. Uh, David needs a lot of energy on the field to get there. And he's eight, in fact. No, no, seven. Seven will do it. Seven will do it. 490 gets you past the Hero's Cape, 440 or 430 HP. You I, can get there, but it's... Yeah, I think David's just trying to figure out now how much energy he's going to need and whether it's achievable. I think that was what we were counting through the discard pile for specifically. Oh, from Slytherwing, hi. Oh, yeah, it's Slytherwing there. there it didn't come in last time. But, oh, wait, oh, oh, David has a lost vacuum for the Hero's oh, Cape. Oh, and that's going to be huge. That is 100 less damage that David now needs to kind of inflict on their opponent. They're going to go for the Slytherwing. I imagine this is another good Sada. Um... Target, Another good yeah. Sada target, but I don't think it's a particularly valid attacker right now. It does 120 <laughs> yeah. damage and burns your opponent, so technically we can think about that as kind but, of an effective 140. Yeah, but but this is so huge because what this now means is that you only need five energy instead of seven to get a knockout on this Charizard. That is massive. That's huge. That's a, that's a huge mathematical kind of 
prowess. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's really, really significant. We've already got three on, but we're having to use an iron O. I don't love that, Freya. That's only three energy in play right now. We're going to need to discard some to get more. We can attach for turn. We can sand. We can we can draw one onto the sandy shocks. But we go over the prime catcher. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, wait, did he take the K on the aluminium with the sliver wing? I, I don't believe he can. Wait. Uh it's a hundred and oh no, he's using the first attack. He's oh, using so stomp off. off. Using stomp off to discard the top card of Vincent's deck. <laughs> I love that. I, I, I think a lot of people forget that Slitherwing can mill a card off the top of your opponent's deck, uh, forcing Vincent but, to possibly but, waste a resource. Oh. Oh, the handshake is happening. Vincent has won it all. <laughs> I'm very curious about the thought process was there. Maybe David was thinking that you had to like, discard something off the top to get lucky to, to deny the win, but yeah, it doesn't matter there. Vincent takes game two and takes